The fountain of youth is a mystical body of water that heals sickness, restores youth, and in some cases gives everlasting life. If you joined us last Thursday on Beyond Mystic with Jean-Claude, then you know we focused more on the internal fountain of youth, a power within the mortal body that could potentially change the trajectory of human life in the new coming timeline if this sacred fountain were to unlock within. We know that karma is simply all action having an equal and opposite reaction. If there is an up, then by law, there has to be a down. If there is a right, then there has to be a left, a man, a woman, etc. We also see this concept played out in the Bible, Qumran, and Torah by the famous Garden of Eden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. To eat from it, as we are taught, was to take on the consequences of learning the laws of karma. This action brought about the cycle of mortality and the pain of death from cradle to grave. We also see this in many other cultures described as the tree of life, which oddly looks a lot like human placenta, a womb of growth and nurture only to release itself when the baby is ready to receive natural breath instead of breath through the umbilical cord by its mother. It is my belief that before the timeline of the Garden of Eden started, Atlantis was here on the earth plane. I have no knowledge of how long a lifespan was on Atlantis, or if mortality was even experienced before the cataclysm that wiped everything out. What I do know is that what we see in old writing regarding the first humans in the Garden of Eden timeline, they lived hundreds and hundreds of years. And if we look into the Book of Jubilees, we see that our lifespan as humans would decrease over time due to our own karmic cycle. However, it is also mentioned in the Book of Jubilees that once we flipped into a new timeline, our full life would once again be restored. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers. Without you guys, we would not exist. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be discussing the Fountain of Youth. So as I said in the opening, we spoke briefly about the internal fountain of youth over on Jean-Claude's channel Beyond Mystic last week. We also covered this fountain of youth on Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa. Both of those episodes will be linked down in the description box below if you miss them. With both Aquarius Rising Africa and Jean-Claude over at Beyond Mystic, there is always just incredible conversation to be had because everybody in this field of spiritual knowledge is coming to the understanding of spiritual knowledge through their own held perceptions of reality. So if the internal understanding of the Fountain of Youth is something that intrigues you and is something you want to learn about, then I would definitely suggest checking out those episodes. With that being said, with the action of karma, as I spoke about in the opening, we have the equal and the opposite reaction. If you've been on this channel for a while now, you know that we are finding through the lost books of the Bible this really, really inherent idea of gnosis, inner knowing. The original Christians, who were the Essenes or the Nazarenes, are often called by scholars to be the Gnostics. 
Gnostics again comes from gnosis, which is a Greek word meaning inner knowing. This is the basis and the crux of the teachings of Yahshua, or as we call him today, Jesus Christ. Not once did Yahshua say that your salvation was outside of you. Everything within the pentacle of his teachings was about an inner knowing, understanding that everything is obtainable and possible through you. As we spoke about on Beyond Mystic, the idea of the human body being the shakti or the action of the soul, the inner soul. We know through the study of yoga that body is nature. Body follows a samskaric pattern of beginning, middle, end, a lifespan. However, as our friend Janine says, we're magical beings and our body holds secrets understandings about our soul that maybe our mortal brain doesn't know or has yet to be taught. If you've been on this channel for a long time and you've gone on this journey with me through the missing books of the Bible and you're understanding now that with the laws of karma there has to be an equal and opposite reaction, then there obviously has to be an opposite of gnosis. And the opposite of gnosis is idio. Edio is exterior knowing or learning. A very base or foundational level of edio would in fact be worldly education, college, politics, government, even, yes, the church. Which if you've been following me for a very long time, you know that I believe, as many other people believe, the church is nothing but pure evil and is not teaching the real teachings of Yahshua. They're offering you a false sense of security through edio, through exterior validation, where again, Jesus never said exterior. He always talked about the interior. So with this being said, if we've already discussed or briefly discussed the sovereign fountain of youth within each body, which in my opinion is the real fountain of youth, then there has to be an edio fountain of youth as well. A mystical entity of water or substance that is outside of the body that if you find this substance it will create everlasting life when I was a little girl one of my favorite books one of my favorite stories was the story of Tuck Everlasting this story followed a young girl by the name of Winnie who discovers a family living deep into the woods. The family appears to be just an average family, a mother, a father, and some sons. Their surname is Tuck, but over time, the little girl discovers that they have a, a deep, dark secret. They are all over a hundred years old. Their story goes on that while they were coming into the mountains, they stopped by a mystical spring and drank from it, not knowing that this spring was the fountain of youth. There's a very intense scene that I still remember to this day reading as a child where the father brings the little girl out onto the lake on a rowboat. She has been given the option to also drink from this fountain of youth, to avoid the pitfall of death. But this father tells her that the change, the shakti of the soul, the cycle of the soul is something that is necessary and begs her not to make the same mistake they did. If you're from the United States, especially the Southeast, you know that the Fountain of Youth was allegedly something that the explorers were also looking for here on this colony, which we will get into a little bit later on in our story. And for many people on this journey of this Great Awakening, we are now aware that one version of the fountain of youth is the drinking of what we call the party substance. If you're not familiar with this party substance, then hold on because hopefully pretty soon you will be aware of what we're speaking about. Unfortunately, this particular party substance is not something I can talk about on YouTube, but most people listening know exactly what that is. This is a substance that restores youth, heals people, 
gives them inner beauty, but yet it's the substance that comes at the expense of another human being. There are written accounts of a fountain of youth throughout human literature since the very beginning. We even see people like Alexander the Great, who lived in the 4th century BC, speak about a river of paradise. In the Middle Ages, there was a story about Prester John, who was a mythical king who apparently reigned a realm that had a tower like the Tower of Babel, which we know now was a space program, and a fountain of youth. From 1095 to 1291 AD, the Roman Empire was involved in the Crusades. And in 1165, copies of a strange letter circulated around what would be Western Europe. Now, many historians today believe that Prester John and his realm never actually existed. And this letter might have been an ancient form of propaganda because the release of this letter would affect the Roman Empire for about 400 years. It was stated that Prester John was a Christian ruler, again, a Christian ruler who possessed the fountain of youth. And this Christian ruler allegedly, according to this letter, had done a lot in servitude to the Crusades. He had defeated a lot of the opposing side. Again, I have to be very careful about what I say on YouTube, but if you know anything about the Crusades, you know exactly what group of people I'm referring to as in the opposing side. And the legend of this mystical man sent map makers on a quest to try to find his origins. In the 13th and 14th centuries, they traveled east along the Silk Road to try to find his kingdom. They were looking for his descendants, but of course that brought them into India. Once they got to India, they realized that this was not the location of Prester John. So they went south. They went south to Ethiopia. Now, personally, I find this very, very interesting because as we have learned, Ethiopia is a pivotal country and a pivotal people when it comes to the true history of mankind. In fact, it is believed that the Ark of the Covenant exists in Ethiopia to this day. And again, if you've been following along with the missing books of the Bible, you know that the Ethiopian church basically gave the middle finger to the Roman Empire and decided to keep a bunch of these books in their canonized Bible. At this point, the Europeans on a quest to find Prester John and his fountain of youth made an alliance with the Ethiopians. But eventually this alliance did not work out. And in the 1630s, Ethiopia officially cut ties with Europe. Very, very fascinating that at this time when Ethiopia cut ties with Europe was when the Roman Catholic Church called Ethiopia heretics. And I find this to be absolutely fascinating and very much in line with my literature. It seems every person, every book that the Roman Catholic Church has deemed heretical, they haven't deemed it heretical because they actually believe it's heretical. They've deemed it heretical for more or less political reasons. Now, probably one of the most famous historical people to be associated with the exploration of the Fountain of Youth is Juan Ponce de Leon. Now, I understand that his real name is Ponce de Leon, as it would be in Spanish. However, I am going to be referring to him as simply Ponce de Leon because that is how we call him here. We have a street here in Atlanta called Ponce de Leon because he did explore this area, which we're going to get to. And it's easier for me just to stick to the pronunciation that I know and have known most of my life. I don't want to get tongue twisted or tongue tied trying to deliver this information with the correct Spanish pronunciation. I know y'all understand. So Juan Ponce de Leon was born in 1474 in Spain. 
He joined Christopher Columbus on his second voyage to the New World in 1493, so he's only 19 years old. Now, I'm going to be very clear about this. I don't believe for one second that Christopher Columbus was the first person, first European person, to discover the American continent. We're going to get a little bit into this when we deep dive back into voodoo. There were already empires from Africa that were coming to and from this American continent. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that Alexander Helios, one of the sons of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, allegedly came to this continent after his parents passed away. There is money that has been found in the Ohio area, the Midwest of the United States, with his face on it. Allegedly, there are Egyptian mummies in the Grand Canyon. We know that there was a Roman architect found here um, when the quote-unquote European colonists got here. It was already here. And some of these world fairs, like the Chicago World Fair, part of the reason for having them was to kind of get rid of some of this architect so nobody would know that this continent had been utilized for a long time, not just by the natives, but by other peoples as well. Again, we know that the Vikings made it here up to like the Canada area, Newfoundland, that whole area. So I am fully, fully, fully aware that the story of Christopher Columbus is not necessarily the true story of how this continent came to be put on the map if that makes sense. This also gets into Jekyll Island and the Georgia Guidestones, the fact that there are indications that this continent might have been part of Atlantis, which might also mean that is why they felt like the Fountain of Youth was perhaps here on this continent. If you were with us last Thursday on Jean-Claude's show, The Beyond Mystic, you know that we somebody commented and asked about Jekyll Island. I did a deep dive into Jekyll Island a long time ago and talked a little bit about some of the stuff they don't tell you that I found on Jekyll Island that supports my theory that this, this land was being used already. Anyway, that video got taken down on my channel, and, and John claude had mentioned that possibly in the future we could do an uncensored on his pay-per-view of that uh, information, which I'm totally down to do because I really, really, really like doing shows with, with other people because two heads are always better than one. You know, on my channel, it's just me talking to you, but when I can film with other people, it, it, it just brings more to the table. And so um, after we get through Thanksgiving this week, I, I will reach out to him and see if we could possibly move forward with that. I'll let you guys know. But anyway, there's just a lot of, of, of mystery here that leads me to believe that, again, there's something about the American continent, not just the United States, but the whole continent that has potentially supernatural powers like the Fountain of Youth. But anyway, Ponce de Leon took the second voyage with Christopher Columbus into the New World in 1493. Now, everybody knows that Christopher Columbus first allegedly found the Caribbean islands before the explorers moved up into the New World, the, the mainland, which is America. And on the island that became known as Hispaniola was a Native American tribe called the Taino tribe. Again, we will get into this tribe when we go back through our voodoo series as well. So the Taino tribe told the explorers that there was this fountain of youth, this elixir that was north of their island. So perhaps Cuba, they talked about this mystical island of Bimini that apparently had it, and of course up into the mainland of what is now United States, uh, Florida and Georgia, where I live. So they were getting word of this potential fountain right away. Now in 1504, Ponce de Leon defeated the Taino nation and was granted land as a reward. So the Spanish court granted him land because he had defeated the people, conquered the people that originally were there. He used the Taino nation as slave labor to farm and generate wealth for himself and for Spain. Now in 1508, he was granted permission to colonize what is now modern-day Puerto Rico. He became the first governor of Puerto Rico, but 
Then Christopher Columbus's son, Diego, got a little pissy about that, and he came in and took over Puerto Rico. I guess Diego was expecting nepotism to be in his favor when it came to colonizing this land. In 1512, King Ferdinand contracted Ponce de Leon to again settle the island of Bemini, which again was one of the places mentioned that might contain the Fountain of Youth. In March of 1513, Ponce set sail with three ships from Spain. He landed off the coast of what is now modern-day Florida on April 2nd. He named this land La Florida because it was the Easter season. And so that's the Spanish, one of the Spanish titles for this time of year. That's why Florida is called Florida now. Now we're going to go back over this area in, in, in a little bit because there was the Tamuquin tribe that was there. And the Tamuquin tribe, again, that has a lot to do with Jekyll Island too. Now, eight years later, Ponce was mortally wounded when he returned to Florida to establish a colony. So this kind of was the demise of Ponce de Leon. Now, interesting thing is that in his letters, there's no mention of a fountain of youth. And so historians are kind of scratching their head. Like, how is Ponce de Leon associated with the fountain of youth if he never even mentioned it in his letters? There is a theory that in 1533, one of the Spanish court chroniclers accused Ponce de Leon of looking for the fountain of youth because he was sexually impotent. But Ponce de Leon had like several children, so I don't think he was impotent. So there's just some weirdness now there. Now I'm sure positive that there's a lot of this documentation, these letters and these journals that we are not privy to. I have read Christopher Columbus's journals. I, I had to in school, but I'm sure that there's a lot that has been held back from us and especially dealing with something like the Fountain of Youth. I'm sure that the powers that be would not want us little people knowing about this particular fountain. Now, still today in Florida, in the area around St. Augustine, which is the oldest city in the United States, there is a Fountain of Youth Park that you can go to. But in my opinion, this is just kind of an amusement thing that just kind of plays with the idea of the Fountain of Youth. I don't think they would ever expose anything like that to the public in that type of way. But this is where it gets super, super interesting for me because I live very close to a building in Atlanta called Ponce City Market. Now, for most of my childhood in my life, Ponce City Market was the building itself was an abandoned building. It had been, I believe, a Sears shop at one point. I believe it was like City Hall or a government building at one point. But a few years back, somebody bought Pond City Market. This was around the time that the Beltline in Atlanta was getting really big. And they decided that they were going to turn this building into what we call Pond City Market. It's right on Ponce de Leon, which is a major street in Atlanta. Again, this is all named after the conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon. Now, Pond City Market is both lofts. You can live there. It's also got shops and restaurants. And again, it is attached to the Beltline. And if you're someone who doesn't have a car, the Beltline is easy access by a bike or walking to other areas of the city. Now, rumor has it that Ponce de Leon did actually find the Fountain of Youth. But it wasn't in Florida and it wasn't in Bimini but here in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta hasn't always been named Atlanta. This area was founded in 1837. It was at the end of the Western and Atlantic Railroad Line. It was first named Marthasville in honor of the governor's daughter, and then it eventually became known as Atlanta. Now they'll tell you that Atlanta is the feminine version of Atlantic because we are three hours from the Atlantic Ocean. But Atlanta, Atlantic, that is coming from Atlantis. And it is believed, there's a legend, that the actual fountain of youth is underneath Ponce City Market. The Ponce City Market, that building, was built on top of it so that the average citizen 
would not know it was there. Pont City Market is also about two miles away from what we call Underground Atlanta. Now, Underground Atlanta was at one point a mall that was underneath the city. At this point, it's kind of shady over there, so no one really goes there, but it is the area where the masquerade, which used to be by Pont City Market, was moved to. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that the masquerade host allegedly Atlanta's vampire, an actual vampire that lives there. And given what we know about what happens beneath our feet, I wouldn't be so shocked if there actually was something under Ponce City Market, something that the explorers felt like indicated that this was the Atlantis, hence why Atlanta got its name. Or maybe it was a portal to Agartha, as we have spoken about on this channel, where it then does go back to the manufacturing of a particular party drug. All in all, we know that the opposite of us, the people on the other side of this board game, are the people that crave EDO, the outside, the exterior knowledge. That's why they do the rituals that they do, to feed off of something else. Whereas on our side of this board game, we'll say, we know that it all comes from within anyway. And wouldn't the joke be on them when all along the fountain of youth was legitimately inside of us and not really some place to find on a map? And of course, this brings us into the age of Aquarius, where according to the Bible and according to other scriptures, our lifespan will start to expand again. We will inherit our light bodies, bodies that are not the same mortality as the ones we're living in now. So maybe those of us who make it to the other side of this will just naturally be granted the fountain of youth. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. As I said, there's so many references to the fountain of youth from other places too. I had to kind of pick and choose which stories I was going to cover or else we would literally be here all day. And I picked, obviously, Ponce de Leon because that was kind of my angle where I was kind of coming from when I decided to cover this topic. And then Prester John just was huge, too. And I had never heard of that before, so it was interesting to see that. But if you know other stories, The Fountain of Youth, then um, please leave them down in the comment section below. Um, I will ask for those of you who know what I'm talking about, please be careful about what you write about in the comment section. Please avoid certain words. Um, I think you guys know why. And um, yeah, so just be respectful of the fact that we're still kind of living in these uh, in this time of weird boundaries when it comes to that. Hopefully that won't be the same. Hopefully that won't be so much longer. But anyway, guys, once again, happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans who are listening right now. Please travel safely. Have fun with your family and your friends. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.